We live in a universe that is managed by the law of cause and effect. This means that everything we do or everything we don't do has a consequence. That consequence might be experienced as positive or it might be experienced as negative. Usually, when something we do has a negative consequence, we learn not to do it and to do something else. But sometimes, we keep doing something despite the negative consequences. In this video, I'm going to explain to you the real reason why a person may be choosing not to stop a certain behavior, even if that behavior has obvious and very severe negative consequences. And I'm going to explain how to break through this pattern if it occurs. In a previous video, I explained that there is no such thing as self-sabotage. I explained that if any part of you is exhibiting a behavior that is bringing about a negative consequence in any way, it's because that part of you thinks it's in your best interest to do so. In other words, it believes it is saving your life by engaging in that behavior and by not going along with the plan, even if there is negative consequences that come with it. For this reason, we cannot say that it's against you. It just doesn't agree with the rest of you about how to be for you. Most of the time, this happens because the specific behavior gets that part of you something that it, and therefore you, needs. So essentially, this part of you perceives itself to be in a lose-lose situation, and that the negative consequence of whatever behavior it is engaged in is worth whatever it is, and therefore you are, <laughs> getting. To understand more about this, you can watch my video titled, There is no such thing as self-sabotage. But here's the thing. Behaviors which persist due to a need that is being met through those behaviors are not even close to as stubborn as behaviors that are inspired by avoidance. And it is avoidance-based behaviors where you see the most extreme patterns of people continuing a negative behavior, no matter the consequences to themselves or even to others. When a person is caught in this pattern, they do X, despite any of the extreme consequences of doing it, because doing X keeps them away from a consequence that they are far more afraid of than those consequences. So that you can understand this pattern, here are two examples. Siraj has a big problem. Every time he pursues a relationship and the woman starts to act like she really likes him, he loses interest in her. He becomes aloof and disconnected emotionally, and he dodges questions, he starts pointing out all of their differences, he starts to go against anything that she says as if he was intent on creating petty arguments, he brings up past women that he's been with as if romanticizing them, he pushes her away. This behavior has massive consequences. For starters, he's desperately lonely. He feels terrible about his life, terrible about himself, and likes to escape those feelings with too much alcohol. His parents shame him on a weekly basis about the fact that he hasn't settled down yet, and the cultural pressure is quite frankly building. But Siraj keeps doing it, despite all these consequences. The reason he keeps doing it is because as a child, he was raised by a severely enmeshed mother, and a culture that, quite frankly, raises children in an atmosphere of enmeshment. In Siraj's childhood, none of his personal boundaries were ever respected or honored. He was treated like he existed for one reason and one reason only, to please his mother and to deny all of his own desires, needs, wishes, aversions, dislikes, thoughts, and feelings to serve his mother's wishes and, quite frankly, over-involvement in any given moment. Suraj is terrified of being swallowed up and suffocated by whoever he is in a relationship with and, by virtue of being suffocated and swallowed up, completely losing his individual autonomy. Siraj is far more afraid of that than he is of the consequences that he's experiencing when he ruins yet another relationship. So the behavior continues. Katie has a big problem. She's addicted to crystal meth. The consequences are dire. She's lost her job. She spends time at other people's apartments because she can't afford one of her own. She suffers from convulsions. She has cracked teeth that are decaying. She has sores on her skin from picking at it. She feels frail all the time. She's lost nearly every relationship in her life. Now she has to deal with the come down and withdrawal every time she uses, and she can clearly see that her life is ruined. Despite all of these consequences, she keeps engaging in her addiction. But it really isn't because of the confidence, the energy, the euphoria, or the elation caused by the high of the drug itself. Nor is it really caused by the chemical element of substance addiction in her body. It's because the drug keeps her away from the emotional hell of her life. This deep vacuum of loneliness. 
the feelings of being inherently unlovable, the emptiness caused by years of emotional neglect and emotional abuse, the desperate powerlessness of the feeling that she can't fix any of the things that are causing her pain about her life so as to feel better. When Katie does crystal meth, it pulls her away from that powerlessness. It doesn't help her to fix any of those problems. After all, her problems feel pretty unfixable to her. Instead, it makes all of those problems just go away for a few hours. Especially in those moments when she's in so much pain, quite frankly, in the moment, that each minute is an unbearable lifetime. And so she starts having suicidal thoughts. Katie is far more afraid of getting stuck in the hell that is those thoughts and those feeling states than she is of the consequences of the drug that is killing her. So she keeps up the addiction. When a behavior that has a negative consequence, or many, is motivated by a need, the way to change the behavior is to find a different way that comes without the negative consequences to meet that need. On the other hand, when a behavior has a negative consequence that is motivated by avoidance, the way to change the behavior is to find a different way to empower a person to keep themselves safe from experiencing whatever it is that they are trying to avoid, and or to decrease their resistance to whatever it is they're trying to avoid. So let's look at, at our examples, now that you know the way to solve this. Suraj might be able to start letting go of his behavior if he was encouraged to stop forcing himself into relationships, I should say partnerships, and have conscious casual relationships or friendships instead until he feels like he really wants to have a committed partnership, rather than doing it because he thinks he has to, or because he thinks it's the only way to not be lonely, to have a committed partner. And he could focus on going to attachment-based therapy. And he could commit to learning all about boundaries. And he could dedicate his free time to learning about himself, developing a sense of self and identity with other people who are also committed to learning about themselves rather than focusing so much on needing to settle down. And he could do parts work with the part of him that feels guilt relative to his mom for focusing on himself. And he could journal every day to identify his own opinions, thoughts, and feelings. And he could set aside blocks of time as a kind of safe container to focus on others so he can go back and forth between focusing on them and focusing on himself. You see? Katie might be able to let go of her behavior by having someone else be completely with her in a brave joint exploration into the deep traumas and emotional absence and losses that are the origin of the mental and emotional pain she has suffered from for years. And by being in a social setting where she is not alone, where there's always someone available to connect to and by exercises to change her deeply painful beliefs, and by disciplining herself to notice and list the positives in any given situation for an allotted time each day, and to restore a sense of empowerment to her life by picking only one single problem in her life at a time to improve and focusing on taking little steps each day to bring about improvement in that situation until it is better, and by doing presence meditation where she develops the ability to be with her emotions rather than abandoning herself by abandoning her own emotions as well as building up a tolerance for feeling uncomfortable emotions. She would benefit by realizing that the feelings themselves are not going to harm her, and that they are in fact helping her by carrying important messages about her personal truth, including what she needs in any given moment. And by picking something to learn, or picking a skill that she already has an aptitude for, and putting time and energy into it so that she can build up her confidence and self-esteem. When someone is terrified of some consequence, and that is why they are keeping up with a negative behavior despite there being other consequences for doing so, it's a profoundly painful experience for them. But the way to solve it is to find a different way to avoid whatever it is they're trying to avoid, so that the initial behavior is no longer the most effective means of keeping themselves safe. Have a good week.